Alan Crockett and I am going to teach you today how to make a cereal box, an invented cereal box. Um, we're going to take something like this and we're going to put basically a new cover on it. So this is how I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to go to file and I'm going to have you start with a new background. Um, the background I want you to start with is 8.75 inches by 10.25 inches and you basically will name it cereal box um, it's a good idea to name things right off the bat because it's easier to deal with if you name it um, so and try to make it pretty big so your resolution comes out really nice and we're just going to click create boom and you'll get a um, background and for this assignment, it's a good idea to have some guides because what we're going to do is we're going to end up cutting off a chunk of it for the side off the whole picture. So you're going to go to um, View and we're going to go to New Guide Layout. And basically you don't want columns because that'll put like little columns in there. So you want to make sure columns and rows is not checked. If they were doing something different, you might want those. You're going to want no margins to the top or the left or the bottom, but you're going to want to stick a margin right here at 2.45, and so you'll just type that in. If I hadn't already typed it in, you'd type 2.45, and you say, okay. And then you got this nice margin line here that will tell you where that 2.45-inch strip is when you're creating your piece. Um, <clears throat> And then I've opened up this stormy sky over here. And so what you're gonna do is take that, make a copy, and you're gonna to go to your new cereal box thing and paste it in there. And you can move this around however you want by just dragging it. You can see when you you know move it down too far, you're gonna end up um, you know, having it show through the edges. And once you get that into place, um, you're gonna start manipulating what I like to try to do is manipulate the um, the background before I start sticking stuff on it that's where you go to these masking layers over here and you can kind of create different masking layers and one since there's such a really bright area there it might be nice to kind of tone down some of the brightness and you can by just pulling this side you can kind of take down some of the brightness a little bit um, you can also increase some of the darkness by pulling in on the curves down here which gives it a little more drama. I went ahead and I did a whole other layer because I kind of wanted to tone down some of this brightness. And so what I did was I did a solid color uh, mask. And you just, you know, the best way to do it is click OK. A lot of times you end up with a color you don't want. And um, you can, I have this below that. So you click on the actual um, layer and you're going to click uh, command I to invert it and see how that turned it black so now if your brush color here is white that will paint into that black and you can see kind of I'll take my opacity down a notch you can see what happens when I start painting into that um, black I'm actually taking some of this color that's actually here and I'm bringing it down so if I had wanted a different color I'd pick this little color thing and when it comes up, I can sample anywhere on this thing. I can sample that color and it'll go to that color there. So I can change this color here to be that color. So when I am painting on this part, the color that's going to go into that bright area will be that kind of reddish color. And I can, you know, if I paint all this stuff and I have that um, changed, I can change it at any time and be like, no, I don't really want the reddish color. I want this more yellow color here. So anyway, that's a great trick to know how to do. And you can, um, by doing that, you just want to make sure when you're painting, you're on the mask itself, not on this. Because it won't let you, see how you won't let you paint, but it's on the mask, it will let you paint. And so um, you can just kind of add a little bit of that yellow back in here. This is kind of more what I was thinking of doing. And um, it's kind of pretty to just kind of yellow up some of these cards, adds a little drama. 
if I decide that I've gone too far and I, you know, there's too much of this, this gradient over the top of it, the easiest way to switch and do the reverse to basically subtly undo things is to um, hit the X button. And what you'll notice over here, when you hit the X button, it flips between forward and background colors. See that? So by flipping those colors, if it's black, it will cover back up over here what I've just done. If it's white in this case, it will open this up. So it'll expose the layer underneath. So anyways, a nice way to play with this is by changing the opacity, you can make a more subtle um, thing, or in this case, you can make it more extreme. You can really cover it up if you want. Um, and like I said, you can just hit X and you can undo what you did. So after doing that, I did a vibrance adjustment where I adjusted the vibrance and made it a little more intense because I wanted something that was kind of dramatic. Then I did a slight color balance adjustment on the whole piece. And then I created a whole new layer. And this layer, you can see, I just kind of painted in this layer. And this layer is still connected to all these other layers. I just painted stuff in it. Then I added a bowl that I'd selected out. Um, and kind of stuck it in there. And then I did some color fill to the bowl as well to kind of tone, get some of these same tones into the bowl. And you can see that for this particular layer, it's on multiply right here as a um, kind of blending mode. And the multiply mode just darkens things. It doesn't um, change the color unless it kind of tones it darker. So that's that's kind of a nice way to kind of adjust things without really changing it. Then I added a spoon um, above here. You can see this is the spoon that's been all selected out. And the spoon layer is just normal and it's pretty opaque. And then I added this little color fill here because you'll see in a second, I wanted a little halo. And then I added the cockroach and um, the cockroach I had selected out and I kind of put it right where that little halo spot is. And um, a neat thing to do sometimes is do two layers of the same thing. And you can see I did this cockroach over the top of the other cockroach um, and then applied a fill layer to that cockroach. And then I did a levels adjustment on the whole thing. Now notice how that levels adjustment really brings the whole thing together. That's because it's it's touching all of these things. It's not just clipped onto one layer in particular. All the layers are being affected by that levels adjustment. Then I did another, and you can see these levels adjustment. I did a mask, and some of these masking, I, I painted out areas I wanted the levels to um, not be affected. So I darkened the whole thing, and by painting out, I was able to get the light back. And you can see I wanted the light kind of right by this cockroach. I kept. Um, doing this levels adjustment right at the, where the cockroach was. Um, then I did a layer where I painted into the cockroach um, and into the bowl a little bit, taking some of these colors from here and there. One thing I talked about earlier, but I'd like to show you right now, if you want to sample a color from the background, you push down the option key while holding your brush tool and see how that little eyedropper you can sample anywhere on the thing and it changes the color of your brush. Like if I sample here, you can see it's just, it's this color. And so when I paint on this area right here, it's gonna paint that color. Or if I sample over here, I can paint this color in, you know. So it's a really, or like up here, I can, I can paint some of that in there. You know, it's a really neat effect to be able to, um, to ch you know, change the color of your brush option and then click anywhere on the thing to change color your brush. Great tool. The other thing, I've talked about this before, but if you want to change your brush size, the brackets allow you, the bracket on the right makes it bigger, the bracket on the left makes it smaller. And you don't have to use control and brackets, just, just that. So those tools are really important to remember because it'll save you infinite amounts of time. So then I decided to add the text and the text, I did some, I warped 
I did the text first and then warped it and then I applied a stroke to it. And a stroke just makes a dark line around the whole thing. And you can change the size of the stroke if you want it more dramatic or not. Um, and then I clipped, basically, um, this is kind of interesting to see. So if you go, you hit down um, the option button or the alt button, right? And you, you click on it at the same time, you'll only see that layer, right? So anyway, you can see this layer, if you look through it, is basically the cockroach on its side. And so I used a clipping layer to stick that over the thing. And then I used a clipping layer on that to change the color with a hue and saturation. Um, and that allowed it to be more of the theme color, which I thought really looks a lot better as the yellow. And... Um, Yeah, so then I added some more text. Toasted nutty goodness, a little bowl of heaven. And then I wanted to make heaven stand out, so I did another layer. I copied heaven into its own layer, and I did a blur. And if you hit Command Plus, you can zoom in on things. And you can see that blur right there that I created around heaven. And I did that by just doing a um, filter and what's called a motion blur. And with the motion blur, you can change the angle of it, and I did a 90 degrees, and, and how far away it goes from there. So that created that kind of little craziness on heaven. Um, if you want to get back to full screen, command and zero takes the whole thing back to full screen, kind of a nice trick. Um, then I started working on the side of it, and I kind of wrote some silly stuff here. Then I imported one of these nutritional facts things from a photograph I'd taken of the side of a cereal box, which allowed me to just, you know, stick something on there without doing a bunch of work. But if you wanted to, in Excel or something, you could create your own nutritional facts if you want to go that far. Um, I would encourage it. It's fun. Then I added the ingredients. Um, have fun with all these things. And then I was pretty much done with it. And um, so what I did then was I saved this whole thing and I proceeded to select out just the front of the box and just the side of the box and made two different um, two different little uh, layers or basically that I could import into the, the cereal box. So I created this side and then um, I created the front. And so then what I'm, what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you how to pull those onto the blank cereal box template. So here's a good trick. You take the side, right? Oh, and when I created these sides, this is an important thing. When you have just one layer like this, and I can get rid of the background because we don't really need it here. Um, when you have this layer, if you just click on um, edit and you go to stroke, you can create a border around your layer very easily. And I think this was like 40 pixels or something like that originally. But you can change whatever the width of the, or the color. And if I do this, you can see it changes the color to that blue color. Um, and control Z undoes anything. So if I wanted to remember match this color, I can just hit the option button and use my little eyedropper tool and I can match that color. It's a great thing to remember. And then if you're going to do stroke again, you go to stroke and, and 40 was too big, so it was probably 30. But anyway, that's how you create a stroke around a whole layer. And that's why I selected out these two different layers so you could easily create a nice even stroke around it. Um, so I recommend for this thickness probably 30. So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Remember Command C is copy. Click on that layer and make sure you're on the layer. Command C is copy and I'm going to go to the blank serial box, right? And I'm going to go Command V and it's going to paste it in there. Now if you're adjusting sizes of things and whatnot, it's a good idea to make it into a smart object because that way you won't lose any resolution. Um, and I'm just going to use the move tool and I'm going to move it over 
Now I've got that line right where the edge should happen, right? So I'm going to kind of line it up with the edge of that line. And Command Plus, you can zoom in and really see what's going on. Then I'm going to take the opacity, knock it down a little bit so I can see what's underneath it, right? And I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, Distort. And the nice thing about this one, it's there's other ways of doing this, but this is fairly easy and fast. Um, if you were doing like a major design job, you might want to do it another way. Um, but this is going to give you the fastest way to do this. And try to line it up as best you can with the edge of the box. So if you get into one of these conundrums where the, the screen is a little small, remember Command uh, minus, and you can make it so you can see what you're doing better. And bring it down. You can always change this if it's not right later. Once you get it all in place, click good. And then we're going to take a look at it a little more opaque and see how it's looking. Oh, pretty good. All right. So um, now let's do the front of the cereal box. So now we're going to take this example of the front and we're going to put it back on the cereal box. And so what you want to do first is you want to go Command C to copy it. And then you're going to go to the um, cereal box. Where is it? And we are going to paste this on here. Um, now, I'm going to turn this into a smart object. That way I can adjust it later on. And I'm going to take the opacity down a little bit. So I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go edit, transform, distort. And just take this up to here. And take this down to here. And take this over to here. There we go. Commit. And then let's change the opacity. Ta-da, we got it. So if you don't want to see the transform controls on your lovely piece, that's how you can do it. Um, and there you have it, basically a cereal box. Um, if you wanted to, you could save this. The way to export it um, so that we can see it is to go to export, quick export as a PNG. And you can put it on the desktop somewhere and um, name it, whatever your um, whatever you want, and get rid of template and maybe serial, and you're good to go. And I'm going to name it three just because there is a two already, believe it or not. And there we go. Okay, so then you could take that and you could drag that into any other image. So if you want to put a, it into a background or on your shelf or something, go for it. I um, hope you have fun with this assignment. I hope to see some fun things and I'll talk to you soon.